Well, I'm really excited uh, at this recording session that we're doing. Uh, you know, this year has been such a difficult year uh, with the pandemic and all the protocols that we have to follow here at the Blair School, for example, we're limited in terms of the number of players that we can have in one space and how, how they have to be separated when we play at six foot distance. And so when the, I, when the idea came up uh, with uh, Ji Hei Jung and the idea of doing renewal and this wonderful project, we realized right off the bat, well, there's, the, there's not a version that fits our instrumentation. Uh, and how lucky can we be to be able to, uh, to commission this new uh, fourth setting of this fantastic uh, percussion concerto uh, and to premiere it for this recording uh, for our chamber winds. And uh, it happens to fit exactly the size that will fit on stage, um, as, as you'll see on the video. In this uh, year of the pandemic, we've all been so so hungry to make music together. We, we, you know, it's really easy to take for granted ensemble music making and that communal spirit when, when musicians get to gather and, and make music together and to have guest artists. And uh, this project is a, really a project of, of the heart from all of us. We've had many obstacles in the prepara preparation for this, but to be able to share music making and to be able to have a, a, an amazing world-class composer like Viet Quang here with us in residence for this project is really something that we are all going to remember uh, as a highlight from this very difficult year.
Hi, I'm composer Viet Quang, and I'm so excited to be here at Vanderbilt recording Renewal with the Wind Symphony. Renewal is a percussion quartet concerto inspired by renewable energy. So there are three movements, the first being hydro, where the percussion quartet toasts crystal glasses. Second movement is inspired by wind turbines. So you'll see they essentially become a wind turbine, complete with choreography. And the third movement is a solar panel movement, and they play a lot of metallic percussion that for me, evokes sunlight, but also the instruments themselves look like solar panels. In the entire piece, the four soloists are treated as one single soloist, so all of the music is conceived as if I was writing a percussion solo concerto, and I uh, split up all the music with a fancy term called a hocket, so that all four of them are equally important, and there's never any time where one of the soloists like busts out with their own solo. Uh, and you'll actually see them move from station to station together as if they are one entity unto themselves. And the piece, therefore, the message of it is working together. You'll see in the first movement, when they toast crystal glasses, they each hold a glass in each hand. And if you do that, you can only toast with yourself. But when you have someone else, you can actually create melodies and interesting rhythms and make it music. And we usually toast glasses when we're in the presence of others and we're celebrating something. So it's kind of a celebration of renewable energy. And the second movement is the wind turbine movement. And it's me basically writing a 90s drum and bass track. And I wrote this really complex drum and bass, drum set beat that's impossible to play with one person. But because it's distributed with all four of them, it's made possible. It's still very difficult, but it's possible. And they become a wind turbine with choreography. It's really fun. And the last movement is essentially a sunrise. Uh, it's the longest melody I've ever written. <laughs> and it's a very meditative, movement where chords slowly rise and ends with the big uh, climax where everyone comes together. So this is actually the fourth version of this piece. The first version was for chamber orchestra. The second was for full symphonic orchestra. The third one is for wind ensemble. And then this fourth one now um, to accommodate for COVID protocol is for chamber winds. And it's really great to do this because it kind of combines the best aspects of the chamber version, the lightness, the crispness, the agility of having fewer people with the power that the full wind ensemble or full orchestra versions have. And I'm so excited that Vanderbilt commissioned it and that they're doing the first performance of it. And thank you to Jihei and Tom Barrier for asking me to do this. Vanderbilt has made a major move in solar power. Much of Vanderbilt's carbon footprint comes from its purchase of electricity. But Vanderbilt worked with uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Nashville Electric Service, to build a new solar facility here in the Tennessee Valley that will provide enough electricity to meet all of the electricity demand of the main campus at Vanderbilt. And that's an extraordinary move. And it's important for a couple of reasons. The most important reason is that uh, we have to decarbonize the electric grid in the United States rapidly if we're going to avoid a really serious climate problem over time. And the U.S. southeastern states would be the sixth largest country in the world if they were a country. So the southeastern states really matter. And in many cases, it's private organizations like Vanderbilt, uh, like some of the major tech companies coming into the region and demanding solar power that is driving the decarbonization of the grid here in the south. So what has Vanderbilt done? Uh, at very low cost, it's uh, agreed to build a new solar facility working with a company called Silicon Ranch, which is also a locally owned company, and to, again, build enough solar power to fuel all of the electric use from the Vanderbilt campus. Because it's done at low cost, this isn't a big burden on student tuition or university costs, but it shows leadership. And the hope is not only will Vanderbilt do this, but by doing this, Vanderbilt will lead other universities, 
other private sector actors, and ultimately uh, government units to, uh, to follow its lead and to begin to decarbonize our electric grid. So why is decarbonization so important? We need to rapidly decarbonize it in order to avoid the worst effects of climate change. Future generations are going to look back at us and they won't remember much about what we did today, but they will know for 500 generations whether or not we took the steps we need to take. So this is a legacy move on some level. And to get to a deep decarbonization, we have to take four steps in the road or four forks in the road. One of them is to de decarbonize the electric grid, and that's what Vanderbilt is doing here. That's the first and most important step. The second step is to electrify transportation. Once you have a low carbon power grid, and then you're, you're uh, providing electricity for vehicles, you can decarbonize transportation as well. And then you need to electrify buildings, heating and cooling systems, appliances, etc. And then lastly, you need to find efficiencies everywhere you can. And this solar initiative is a big part of Vanderbilt's effort to pursue these forks in the road. If it does so, it'll show a legacy move. It will help us recruit and retain students and faculty and staff. Uh, and it will begin the transformative process that will make us all very proud about our future. So I'm excited to be a part of this initiative. And I applaud the Vanderbilt management for stepping up and doing the right thing.